Is Penn MNT the hardest program to get into in the United States? Uh, I get that question a lot from my students, and today we're going to be answering that and many more questions uh, in the Ultimate Guide to Penn MNT. Yay! So, uh, what's up, guys? I am an MNT student, and I felt like there wasn't a guide like this on the internet. And when I was applying to college, I really wished that there was some more information about the kind of ins and outs of MNT and the kind of inner workings and inner vibe of MNT. So I uh, decided to bring that to you today. Uh, I know it's admissions season for a lot of you, and I'm a little late. I'm sorry, I was sick. But let's uh, just hop right in. So, first, what's an overview uh, of MNT? So I mean, obviously, I have to give you know an overview. <laughs> but MNT is or stands for the Jerome Fisher Program in Management and Technology. It's one of UPenn's dual degree programs. Uh, Penn has a couple of them. And essentially every student in the MNT program will get two degrees, one in business and one in engineering, uh, essentially. The business degree isn't technically a business degree, it's technically a bachelor's of science and economics, but everyone knows that Wharton is a business school, uh, so you're definitely getting a business degree. But that's the essential overview. It's a four-year program. They accept about 50 to 60 students a year. Um, well, they accept a little bit more, but they have 50 to 60 students a year. And uh, that's pretty much the overview of the program. Pretty simple and straightforward, but there's a lot of minutia that need to be taken care of as when you're completing two degrees, things get a little bit complicated. So let's move into academics. So MNT lets you choose from essentially any major you want in the engineering school and any concentration you want in the business school. Concentrations are what Wharton calls majors. Uh, and usually concentrations are only four classes, so they're not that major actually which is probably why they're called concentrations and not majors. But in the engineering school, you're allowed to major in whatever you want, uh, essentially. However, uh, the, ma the majority of MNT students are majoring in computer science and finance. Uh, I would say probably 70% of them or more. I don't have the exact statistics, but 70%-ish are majoring in computer science and finance. So the reason for this is Wharton... Uh, the number one paying degree at Wharton, or highest paying degree uh, on average, is finance, and the highest average paying degree in engineering is computer science, and that just like makes sense for a lot of students to do. There's really good job placement. If you're not good at software engineering, you can't get the offers after college. You go into business and you get the IB offers, the investment banking offers, uh, or consulting. So that's kind of... Uh, how academics plays out. However, you're completely free to choose whatever major you want. I personally am majoring in electrical engineering and entrepreneurship. Uh, I will say though that if you are planning to go into software or IB, which is investment banking, I should really like define that better. But MNT is a really strong program because there's so many people that are interested in that sphere in MNT. MNT has a ton of resources um, for students to basically take advantage of academically. They have Obviously, just being having MNT students, I feel like uh, being friends with them is really helpful since they're frequently taking similar classes. But if you're not a computer science major, it's not that there aren't people in other majors. It's just rarer, so it's a little bit harder to find MNTs that are in your major. But aside from that, you're going to be taking all your classes uh, pretty much without MNT students or not only with MNT students. And this is a question I get sometimes. People ask... Do you take classes with other MNTs? The answer is yes and no. Um, MNT really only has two required courses and then it has a senior design at the end of the four years. Uh, but those two required courses are gonna be like two out of 48-ish courses, I would say. Uh, people average about 48 courses in MNT. And because you're taking so few MNT specific courses or courses where only MNTs are in it, you're pretty much gonna develop relationships with everyone in your engineering major, in your Wharton, concentration or your Wharton friends. And I would say that most MNTs have a bigger social life outside of MNT and don't really hang out only with other MNT students. Um, that being said, that doesn't mean that you can't make friends and, you know, have kind of a nice uh, bond with a lot of MNTs and take the same classes and kind of do stuff like that. But I would say it's less common uh, than a program that's, you know, specifically designed to have a lot of classes for its students. I would say the MNT is a little bit more loose, especially since so many MNTs are majoring in other things. Um, like I said, the majority are computer science, but a lot of people are doing minors. A lot of people are, there's still a decent chunk of people majoring in other things like bioengineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, systems en engineering. So because of that, it would be really unfeasible uh, for the program to even have 
a lot of people taking the same classes. But that's kind of the overview of MNT Academics, and a lot of people ask, what's the advantage of MNT Academics? Uh, why am I getting an ed two educations at once, essentially? What's the difference between doing an engineering degree undergrad and an MBA, or something along those lines? Um, this is pretty much me pirating straight from the MNT website, but in a sense, there's really a benefit in taking two types of courses at once. Um, taking business courses and then engineering courses or vice versa, you can apply that business knowledge you learned to your engineering courses um, or vice versa. You can think about product ideas and how you would implement that. And learning those skills a little bit earlier is a little bit better um, for kind of later in life implementing them. You'll have like a better grasp on them since you've done them for a little bit longer. You have a four-year business degree instead of a two-year MBA. Uh, additionally, MBAs require some work experience for the most part. Uh, Wharton MBA requires three to five years of work experience usually. And because of that, it's a little bit hard to get into the MBA track straight from undergrad. So you'd have to do engineering, work for three years, and then do MBA likely. Um, but the other benefit is just being able to get all that done in four years, you feel like there's a lot of kind of uh, pr like productivity in your time, efficiency. You're not burning time. Uh, you know, it keeps you out of trouble, uh, or as one of my mentors used to say. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about the social life of MNT. So, MNT has a unique reputation on campus. Um, MNTs are thought to be really smart and really talented because the program is really difficult to get into uh mnts kind of have this sort of reverence on campus where people are like i don't know like you tell someone oh you know i'm an mnt and they completely flip oh my god you must be so smart like how did you get in or maybe not that but like people really think mnts are crazy for for the most part uh there's some exceptions and i have to tell you um mnts like, are not all super smart and cracked and crazy. Um, you know, they... Like any program, MNT admits duds. Um, and I'm one of them. So, like, I would know. Uh, but no, MNT doesn't... Isn't able to have a perfect admission streak and admit, like, the best and, like, top students. The admissions people make mistakes just like any school. And any school is going to have a portion of really smart, talented people, uh, really driven people, people who are really great at what they do, and it's going to have a portion of people who snuck in, who wrote a really good application, who get there and really just slack off. And that's kind of like any program uh, in the U.S. So I would say that in MNT, uh, the same type of thing occurs, although it's on a smaller scale because there's only like 50-ish students in a year. Uh, although the amount of like really cracked people varies from year to year. In terms of social life with other MNTs, though, um, I would say that your first year, you genu generally will be living in the same floor in the same dorm, uh, and that really like forms a bond. Everyone kind of knows each other now in the program, and because you're all studying business and engineering, you have relatively similar interests, so it's very easy to make friends with other MNTs, and they're usually willing to meet and help out and stuff like that. Um, now, I will say, very interestingly, most MNTs are on the engineering side of things. What I mean by that is... If you were to ask me if they gave off a more Wharton vibe or a more engineering vibe, they would definitely give off a more engineering vibe, more kind of like reserved and like nerdy, um, which just sounds like me again. Well, maybe not reserved, but nerdy for sure. Anyway, I would say that because MNTs are studying engineering, engineering is really the harder of the two uh, out of business. Everyone knows engineering is much harder. And in order to be able to study engineering, it takes up more of your time. You're more on the engineering side. There are MNTs that are really focused on kind of networking and having uh, good relationships and kind of with an entrepreneurial mindset and extroverted, which is more the like Wharton type of thing. Uh, but I will say that, like I said, more, more people are definitely on the engineering kind of side of things. I will say one interesting thing about the social life at MNT, um, outside of MNT. So at Penn, there's kind of an unspoken hierarchy of people uh and it's really actually not great uh it's actually kind of toxic but it's it exists nonetheless uh essentially where the hierarchy goes mnt at the top lsm which is the life science management and wharton program uh huntsman uh which is another dual degree wharton program but with language and then just pure wharton and then engineering and then college of arts and sciences and then nursing 
And this kind of social hierarchy is not present with everyone, but it definitely feels uh, unspoken, where kind of some people feel that M&Ts are really, um, like I said, smart and really deserve to be at the high end of the social kind of ladder and get invited to like parties and stuff and like are just really cool. Uh, and some M&Ts, you know, think that they're really cool because I guess they're an M&T, which don't get me wrong, we are. But, but, <laughs> um, most people don't think like this, but there is an unspoken rule, especially between Wharton and the other schools. A lot of schools have kind of this feeling that this that Penn pays more attention to Wharton and that Wharton is really the big name because it's more prestigious um, of a business school. And m and carries that same sense, except m and students are not only Wharton, but they're working harder and doing engineering and actually putting in a lot of work, uh, unlike single degree Wharton students. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, and because of that, there's kind of this unspoken hierarchy, but it doesn't exist with everyone. Uh, I don't buy into it at all. I think, like I mentioned, that like somehow I snuck into m and and uh, yeah, I know myself, and I uh, I would put myself at the bottom of that <laughs> at the bottom of that social hierarchy. Moving on to job placement out of MNT, what kind of jobs MNTs get, um, what they do after college. So MNT is kind of split, but I would say it's pretty homogenous, just like Greater Penn. Um, like I said, most people are studying computer science and finance, and you get kind of a split between people going into investment banking. Uh, at big firms and people going into uh, software engineering or software development or something along those lines with the computer science degree. I would say those are the two most common routes and m and have an amazing time with job placement because the m and network is so strong. There's 2,500 alumni and they're always willing to help other m and because the program is quite small and quite selective. Uh, they're always willing to help other m and So m and are really able to get positions at, you know, Google, Tesla, uh, Apple, just big companies really easily usually, um, a lot super easily, but I would say as easy as Greater Penn, well not, I would say easier than Greater Penn and pretty, pretty decently. Um, and because of that, uh, a lot of m and I mean, go into those positions and go into industry positions. A lot of them are able to get jobs at Goldman or even McKinsey, there's some that go into consulting, uh, but I wouldn't say, I would say it's definitely more common to go the finance route, especially since you're so quantitatively oriented with engineering. Um, a lot of them go into the kind of finance route. A lot of them actually do both, uh, go into software engineering at a big firm, make really good money and then pivot into finance. Um, some of them go get an MBA uh, and then pivot into finance, something along those lines. Some go into finance and then pivot into software engineering once the company downsizes or something along those lines or when they get sick of it. Um, however, I would say that there's also a decent chunk of m and students that go into entrepreneurship. And this is the reason that I chose the program. It's definitely not a minority, but there is a good amount compared to, I guess, comparing it to Greater Penn, of people that really want to create something. It, because they have that engineering background with the business mindset, they're a little bit more likely to go into the entrepreneurial route and to want to create something and try and sell it. And m and is a pretty decent program for entrepreneurship. They offer, uh, some of their classes offer kind of teaching about entrepreneurship and, uh, you know, your second year m and course is literally about entrepreneurship specifically. They're really good. Uh, they have a lot of connections. m and I mean, alumni, there's a lot of them in Silicon Valley. There's a lot of connection opportunity there. And because of that, uh, it's really kind of easy to get into entrepreneurship. Not, not really easy, but it's, it's easier than in other circumstances. Uh, and it's really a good launch pad for that. And I think that although not all the students are interested uh, in entrepreneurship, it's always gonna be a minority by definition. Uh, innovation is going to be the minority. It's gonna be the new thing, the thing that challenges the status quo. And let's talk a little bit about admissions. Uh, this is the juicy one as most of the people who are gonna be watching my video are probably interested in applying to m and and wanna know about the admissions process. So, um, m and admissions is a little bit interesting. So they have two m and specific essays that you have to write. And these essays are literally essentially, how are you going to use m and to explore your interest in uh, the intersection between business and engineering? Uh, well, how are you going to use m and to explore your interest in business, engineering, and the intersection of the two, I suppose. And the second question is kind of uh, talk about a time you solved a problem. And 
MIT admissions are really interesting. Um, I have a lot to say about this. So I am an admissions counselor. I work with a lot of students um, throughout the year on different colleges and different essays. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I get the question a lot. Is MNT the hardest program to get into in the US um, when people are considering applying? Or I read this on Reddit or something along those lines. It's really tough to say. So MNT doesn't release admission statistics, but even though they don't, to make that comparison is kind of unfair. So getting into MNT versus getting into Stanford raw numbers, uh, if you took like a random applicant, just, you know, random sampled an applicant, it would be harder to get into MNT uh, most likely. However, that's because MNT is a specific program. It's specifically for business and engineering people who are interested in that route. And Stanford admits all people uh, from, you know, every, I guess, major. So I guess you should really be asking the question, if I'm interested in engineering and business and I have the kind of extracurriculars and the kind of background that does that, um, you know, what are my chances of getting into MNT? It's still very slim. Um, Penn, getting into Wharton is already quite difficult uh, at Penn. It's the lowest acceptance rate of the school. It's a little bit hard to tell because Penn meshes their acceptance rate from all four schools. Uh, they don't usually give the acceptance rate only for Wharton, but it's usually lower uh, than the other schools because it's a little bit more prestigious. It's the number one business school undergrad and a lot of people want to go. Getting into MNT means you have to get into Wharton and the School of Engineering. And, you know, the program has to accept you. It's not just getting, it's not a matter of can I get, a, could I get into both? A lot of students do get into both in an uncoordinated dual degree, but it's really, does the program uh, see you as a good fit? So I would say that it's quite hard to get into, and I would put it as about as difficult as any top five school, Harvard, Stanford, MIT. I would put it as actually more difficult personally, um, but to be fair, I haven't seen a full year of admission statistics, and no one has from the students for the, for the most part. Um, because they're so secretive about admissions st statistics, which I think is a good and bad thing. Uh, I think it encourages people to apply a little bit more, but it also, you know, makes it a little bit hard on students who are really interested in learning more. However, I can tell you about admissions that MNT is looking for specific things in your application. Uh, and I've spoken with, I mean, the whole staff at MNT, and I kind of know because they tell you, <laughs> like, they're very open about it. Uh, what they're looking for. I mean, actually, when I was applying, they told me what they were looking for in the application. If you go out and search it, uh, or if you go out and seek it and ask them, um, they actually said, we can tell you anything you want except admission statistics. But here's what MNT is looking for in an applicant. Essentially, MNT wants an applicant that tells, has some dream, has some goal, uh, some way they're going to use business and engineering and integrate it. And it sounds kind of cliche, but a lot of people talk about their past accomplishments. And a lot of people talk about things that they've done with business and engineering. And actually, I would argue that MNT is much more interested in what you're going to do with their degree after you get it, not what you've done in the past. Um, what you've done in the past matters, but I would say that they really want to know what your kind of goal with the program is and what you plan to do with it. Uh, and with that being said, giving them some goal that you're going to accomplish after college you know i'm really interested in crypto startups and after college i hope to work on a crypto startup and i want to get the business background to get uh the soft skills for that startup or to get you know the marketing skills for that startup or i know crypto is a very divisive space and i want to learn how to present myself and present my product that's the kind of thing mnt looks for they don't look for past accomplishments as much um they still look for it but they don't look for you to flex yourself as much but they really want to hear kind of what your goals are, uh, why you're interested in engineering and business, and kind of the impetus between, uh, you know, for you wanting to study that, and kind of like how you plan to specifically use both degrees. Um, MNT doesn't want to train you to get both degrees and then have you use only one of them, uh, although that happens super frequently. Uh, but ideally, they want to get students that are going to benefit from having both degrees. And of course, uh, they want to see super strong academic achievement. They will let in a range of people from SAT scores and APs and whatnot. They will let in international students. MNT has fairly high international population, I feel. Um, actually, that's a qual uh, quality of Wharton in general. But with that being said, MNT is probably the hardest program on campus um, overall, on average, I would say, in terms of classes, amount of classes taken. Uh, may maybe there's a couple of, like, Viper might be a little bit harder, which is engineering plus a uh, 
a field that lets you do energy research, essentially. Uh, physics, chemistry, something along those lines. Um, but it's one of the hardest programs at Penn, and because of that, they want to see that you can handle that course load. They're really worried that you're not going to be able to handle the course load or you're not going to take it seriously and go and party, uh, which happens a lot too. But that's kind of what MNT is looking for in, in admissions. Um, and just one last note for admissions. Don't be afraid to reach out to the program if you have questions. Um, it's their job to find really talented students. And if you reach out, you know, they obviously want to hear it uh, because they, they want a better shot at picking up more really talented students. Uh, I reached out to the program before I applied and I got a response from the director twice, which is, you know, really accessible. So if you have any specific questions about applications, feel free to reach out. And in the end here, I want to give a pros and cons of MNT. Why uh, I chose, perhaps I can share a little bit about that, but also kind of the cons of MNT. Uh, as every school is going to have its cons, no matter what you believe, you know, your dream school is going to have your cons. I mean, MNT is my dream school and there's a lot of cons nonetheless. Uh, well, MNT is my dream program, I, I suppose. It's not a school. Um, so... Pros of MNT. Actually, let's start with cons. Uh, I don't know. It just comes to mind. I'm, I'm so used to complaining. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't be, but you kind of get used to it, uh, unfortunately, with uh, having a ton of classes and midterms and stuff. But I would say that the cons of MNT are that, like I said, you take a lot of classes. And it might not seem like a lot when you're at home uh, thinking to yourself or when you're in a high school taking five like or even like six classes normally. Um, but at college, it's a little bit more difficult. Curves are a little bit harder. Penn is quite a difficult school in general compared to other Ivies. Grade inflation is bad here, um, unlike Harvard. Uh, but anyway, so I would say that taking all those classes has benefit and detriment. As I mentioned earlier, there is an academic benefit. You get a lot of productivity out of your time in the sense that you're learning a lot uh, in a lot of your classes, and of course there's going to be some classes where you feel like they're useless, you don't learn a lot, but that's going to be any college you go to. But on the flip side, because you're taking so many classes, you're going to have less time for your social life, you're going to have less time for uh, other ventures that you want to do. If you wanted to do a startup, it'd be a little bit more restrictive on your startup time, where if you did, whereas if you did a single degree uh, at some other college, it would give you more time, like, just definitively. Uh, and a lot of other colleges are also easier. Uh, now, a lot of students choose to essentially forfeit some of their GPA, uh, sacrifice their GPA for their social life or for some venture that they're working on. Um, some students are able to somehow do both and have free time. I don't know what they're doing with their lives. They're people much smarter than me um, academically. But with that being said, um, that's a real detriment to the program. And it's something that you kind of have to be up for when you're applying to it. And some students can handle it. Some students want that knowledge anyway. And you still have time to do other things. MNTs are really active in other uh, events and other kind of clubs. And even on the website, it always talks about how MNTs are doers by nature. They're not going to waste time. And that's pretty true, I would say. Um, some people get into the program and then slack off. They're like, oh, I made it. I'll get whatever job I want. But that's the minority. Um, actually, that might not be the minority entirely. But I still, nonetheless, um, at any college, there's going to be slackers once they get in, uh, at least any top college. Well, any college in general, but especially at top colleges, you have students who were worked really hard in high school and then get in, and that was their goal. But back to the point. Um, so another issue that comes up a lot uh, with people that get accepted into MNT uh, is that a lot of people get, who get accepted have offers at other colleges. Uh, a lot of people are deciding between MIT and Penn or Stanford and Penn. And one of the cons of Penn... Unfortunately, it's not really a con of the program, but is the weakness of the engineering school relative to schools like Stanford and MIT. It's ranked about, like, top 30, and um, it's not quite as strong as a school like Stanford and MIT uh, where they specialize in it, uh, obviously. And a lot of people ask, well, MIT has business and I can double major with engineering. Uh, why don't I do that there? So that is a weakness of the program, but I wouldn't say Penn Engineering is bad by any means. Penn Engineering is pretty strong. Nonetheless, it's still Ivy League Engineering. And Penn is, like, a pretty decent school at most things it does. Uh, I would say that the students coming out of it feel really strong. And I've met some really, really smart people at Penn. I mean, that's just any Ivy League. But Penn Engineering is nothing to scoff at anyway. Uh, another con is MNT has 
huge name to it uh, in certain circles. What that means is MNT isn't really known too well outside of Penn. Wharton is certainly known. Uh, Penn is certainly known. Uh, although not as much as some other schools, but still really well known. But MNT is kind of niche, and it's a 40-year-old program. About It's a little bit more than 40 years old. It's like 44 or something. But a lot of people don't know the program outside of Penn, uh, or outside of people who were you know, really into college admissions and looking at top colleges, or outside of a few circles. Uh, now, I will say that work, pla like places of work definitely know it if you're applying to jobs. Uh, they definitely know it. They definitely have had MNTs apply, especially if you're applying to big companies with big names. I mean, like, there's certainly MNTs there. Uh, but the general populace has no knowledge of MNT. I mean, I wear my MNT shirt everywhere, and I've never had anyone stop me anywhere uh, except, you know, at Penn. Uh, yeah, literally, just that pen. That's a little bit of a con, um, because the program is actually quite prestigious with how difficult it is to get in, especially if people know what it is. But the people who matter know, uh, which means, like, for the most part, when you're applying to programs, um, if you're applying to grad schools, although not all grad schools know, to be fair, but most of them know MNT just because there's been so many MNTs before you that have applied. But let's talk a little bit about the pros. So the biggest pro of MNT, in my opinion, as opposed to any other program in the US, is its size. Uh, well, I mean, other programs have small size, but having 50 students and having fifth, uh, five staff working for those students means you get so much attention and so much individualized uh, help for anything you might need. You can meet with the directors. You can meet with anyone in the program. Um, you know, you can talk with any of the staff and they have connections and they have a lot of experience and they're willing to help you. Um, I would say that's one of the bigger pros. Uh, and just having kind of that support, if you're someone who feels like you need a lot of support, you're going to automatically have that community at MNT uh, no matter what. Whereas at other schools, you're going to be one of 1,500 in a lot of cases, one of 2,000, one of 2,500. Uh, and you're not going to get that same level of support by any means. Another huge pro to the program is... Just the program itself, which sounds a little bit weird, but the program offers kind of their own classes, uh, their own like tight-knit community, and their own social events and stuff like that. And having something that you can be a part of right off the bat is very nice when you're getting situated into college. Having a group of students that you know uh, very early is very nice when you are in college. And the program really makes an effort to do extra stuff for you. Uh, it takes you to San Francisco your second year. Uh, at the end of the year, there's a week-long trip where you meet with a bunch of business, you know, people, uh, or people, like, high up in positions. People in high up positions, words. Um, you get to, to tour, like, the Tesla factory or something. And there's programming kind of meant to help you. And I would say another pro to MNT, as opposed to other schools, just has to be Wharton. Uh, Wharton is by far the best business school undergrad for most things. Um, Wharton does have its flaws uh, in the sense that there's a little bit of a strong finance and consulting culture at Wharton, and those are kind of like the two main routes, and there's a lot of push to go towards that. But on the flip side, Wharton has resources for entrepreneurs, uh, and Wharton is just really, really a huge strength to MNT, and it's something that really helped me uh, kind of make my decision. Uh, Stanford, for example, did not have a business school undergrad, and I wanted to study business, and that's a really big benefit. And Wharton is a stronger business school uh, than Sloan overall, I would say. Uh, although Sloan is really good because of how strong MIT is engineering-wise and because of how quantitative the students tend to be. Sloan is really good at data analytics and statistics, but Wharton on the flip side is really good at the qualitative stuff, and I feel like preparing you for the general business world, Wharton is very good at that. Another pro is that you get your own building, uh, which is quite nice, and you get to kind of hang out with all the MNT students, and it's just nice to have your own building to like stop at, and no one can enter except MNTs, uh, although you can bring in your friends and stuff. But it's nice to have a nice, quiet study space and to kind of meet other MNTs and chat. I would say that's really fun. Um, but yeah, that about does it. I'm sure I missed like 50 things, but I think that the video has gone on long enough for now. But thank you so much for watching my video. Um, I hope to make some more stuff like this. But overall, MNT is a really great program. I would suggest it for anyone who's interested in business and engineering, which sounds a little cliche. But if you have any interest in that sphere, I would say that MNT is like, by far the best program in the country. Um, and there are so obviously other schools that are really good at other things, uh, but if MNT is the only one you get into, uh, welcome. And uh, 
since I'm publishing this, I guess, around admissions time, you know, thank you and uh, welcome to the next incoming class. And uh, yeah, that about does it. Bye.